Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is me, William Lease, your number one stop for data storytelling, data journalism, and sports betting. And we are continuing the creating a sports betting model 201 video today with the third video in the section two of the series, the sixth video overall. We're going to talk about preseason estimates. Now, preseason estimates, in my opinion, are necessary for any sports betting model because the idea of preseason estimates is not so much to predict how a team is going to fare for the season, although that is probably what you, you should be trying to do, but it's to give you a mean to regress to until a large enough sample size has been built up to therefore rely on stats of the season that you're actually measuring. Because let's face it, for example, in NFL, you only have 17 games. It's probably going to take more than half the season to get a big enough sample size to go off of. You need some way to fill in the gaps. You need a mean for each team to regress to until a big enough in-season sample has been built up. That's why preseason ratings are so important. You are, me you are trying to estimate the stats of every team. Now, in my opinion, it's preseason estimates that will make or break your model because the preseason estimates, there's a lot you can do with them, and there's a lot of freedom. But there's going to get to a point in every sports season where enough games have been played, a big enough sample size has been played, and therefore everyone's going to be pretty much operating on the same ground because everyone's drawing from the statistics that have been played for the current season. So the really the only way you can ever get separation is at the beginning of season where everyone's running off their preseason estimates and a lot of different ways to go about it. So you might be able to find an edge there. Pretty much every sport that I have had success in for that season, when it comes to betting in a successful sports model, the most success I have had has come at the beginning of the year when preseason estimates, preseason numbers are still doing most of the heavy lifting. And usually how it works is that things taper off as more games have been played because let's face it, the more information the books and the markets have to work off of from actual in-game data that has been played for the current season, the less of advantage you're going to have because they have all the information they need. They're not guesstimating, they're not guessing, and everybody's running off the same playing field. All that's going to be baked into the market and it's just a lot harder to find an edge. It's a lot harder to find separation. So... The most damage you can do when it comes to winning money, betting on sports is going to be if, if you have good preseason estimates, and that's going to make or break you. And I think it's necessary to do in every single sport. Now, you do preseason estimates by using past data uh, to forecast the future. And this is where modeling really comes into play. You're going to have to build some sort of model. I've used nearest neighbor analysis. I've used logistic and linear regression. I've even used tree-based learning uh, to do these things. But for example, college football, college basketball, major league baseball, all of those sports I built robust preseason estimate engines with, they take a lot of time. They take a lot of effort, a lot of trial and error. And let's face it, you're still just trying to get as accurate of an estimate as possible. It's not possible to have perfect perfect preseason estimates. There's always going to be players or teams that over or underperform what you're guessing. You're just trying to find what the most accurate theoretical mean is for these teams. But generally in college sports, for example, you're measuring, you know, the amount of experience returning uh, a program baseline, how they did the year before, and you're trying to forecast that. But the one thing you want to do with your preseason estimates is you're trying to forecast how the team is going to play throughout the whole season, not just the first couple of weeks. You really want to keep that in mind. You're trying to come up with the most accurate baseline for every team. But I, in my opinion, I believe this is the area that you need to spend the most time on when you're building a sports betting model is the preseason estimates because, like I said, it's what's going to make or break you. For me, I don't even phase out my preseason estimates. Even in, uh, no matter what the sport is, I always had the preseason estimates have some sort of weight in the model. Even in September for baseball, for example, even in the end of the season in football or basketball because there's still a lot of value that can be gained. And I did the research. I did the work. I showed that a model's more accurate, at least my models have been, where I still have like 5% preseason estimates making up the overall rating than 0% at the end of the year, just because you still need something to regress to, you still need something to forecast to. And I'm going to touch upon this on the next uh, video in the series, the forward thinking video. All models need to be forward thinking, but preseason estimates is just part of that. 
but make the most robust preseason estimate engine possible. Go back far, collect a lot of data that you can model off of and regress off of. Um, because the more robust you make it, the better. You don't want to overfit. You don't want to go too overboard. You don't You don't want to stress over yourself and try to be too accurate because that's just an impossible target to hit. You're not going to create something that's super accurate. You just need a realistic enough baseline, a realistic enough level to regress to in the season until enough games have been played. You want to be ahead of the curve in that regard. And that's how preseason estimates work in all sports and why they're so important. I don't think they're optional. A lot of people are like, oh, I'll just wait until enough games have been played. But remember, the more in-season data the odds makers and the markets have to work off of, the less of an advantage you're going to have because you're going to be working off the same data. And I just don't think you're going to be able to outsmart them. That's why it's so important to have strong preseason estimates and try to run up the score in the beginning of the season uh, rather than the end. That's how I feel. But anyway, that wraps it up for this video about preseason estimates. We got two more videos in this section to go, forward thinking and back testing. Those two videos are going to be important, so stay tuned for that. But like I said, I hope you guys aren't too disappointed in these videos. I hope you're not mad that I actually, I hope you're not mad that I didn't pull up R or Python and actually show you how to program preseason estimates. That's not going to happen. I'm not giving that information out for free. Like I said, these videos are just going to be, be me talking into the microphone, so I hope you can at least get the value out of that. More like these videos are creating like a checklist of things you need to do in creating a model. I'm not actually going to show you how to build them. But anyway, that wraps up for this video. Until next time, this is me, William Lease, signing off.